What's up fantasy fanatics, I've got a brand new fantasy video, but before I get into it, I want to talk to you about something that bothers me. Something that's been rustling my jimmies. Something that never, ever fails to deliver. And that is of course my beloved Parramatta Eels getting in the headlines. The Parramatta directors take the NRL to the Supreme Court. Parramatta Eels cheat the salary cap. Good guy Nathan Peets is forced out of the club. Junior Paulo caught playing park rugby. Corey Norman faces court in illegal drug possession. Kieran Foran sues the Manly Sea Eagles. Kieran Foran sues radio host Jackie O. And finally, Kieran Foran sues the TAB. What is it with this club and not having their shit together? I'm 26 years old, not getting any younger, and have never tasted Premiership gold, except for that one time against the Knights, which was woeful. At this rate, I don't think it's ever gonna happen. How about just once, just once, one time, and for one year only, 12 month period, 365 days, everyone just stops suing everyone. Cause this ain't America. And keep your eyes on the prize. Like my boy Tupac. <laughs> Alright, ran over. It's fantasy time. Let's have a look at how pretty my team's sitting as we're traveling just outside the top 8,000, but I'm confident that after round 12, being the first bye week, we'll shoot up 3,000 ranks as we've planned pretty well for the buyers. For round 12, who are the players that I'm looking to trade in? Elijah Taylor without a shadow of a doubt. I picked him up last week before scoring his huge 61 points for the Tigers. Now looking back on the 2015 when ET played at lock for the Penny Panthers, he averaged 51.6. And now that he looks to have nabbed the starting spot, he's 110% a keeper. Not to mention he bottomed out in price due to his lack of minutes at the Panthers, has a low break even of 34 this week, and plays the buy rounds of week 12 and 15. You'd be crazy not to pick him up. Jerome Hughes. Jerome comes into the side replacing the absent Thurston and Morgan who are carrying out their origin duties. The beauty about Jerome is that he comes in at the perfect cash out option at a rookie price. You can pitch Jerome in either slot at the halves or wing fullback with the confidence that he'll be playing two of the major buy rounds and maybe even get another run if Henry decides to look to preserve either of his two stars. Blake Austin. Austin has been hot and cold this year with injuries, but looked the goods against the Warriors last week as he fired on all cylinders. Could see his 2015 form return with an average of 41.7 fantasy points. He's a pot in disguise given that he's bottomed out at 300k, who will play two of the three major buy rounds and has less than 4% of fantasy owners. I'm going to take a punt on Austin, bring him in as a keeper. If he can stay injury free, it might just pay off. Debutant Jaden Sewer. Jay not only debuts at rookie price, but starts at second row for the Broncos this Friday. To add to this, he's a dual position player. Yeah, that's right, second row and center. He's a great cash out option if you've already got enough coverage for the later buy rounds. Anyway guys, if you missed my last fantasy video, you can check it out. It's just on the right side of the screen. It's an in-depth look at the center position. And moving forward, I'm going to be making these fantasy videos on the weekly. So if you'd like to see more, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching guys and best of luck in this week, fanatics.